three. Hello and welcome. This is Heavy Business. I'm Aaliyah. And I'm Curtis. And today we are here with JJ Kozan, the person behind the obelisk. How are you doing today, JJ? I, I am well, Aaliyah. Thank you. And and you nailed the introduction. That's it. Uh, That's it. I am the person. Yes. It's, it's, it's a human guy. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. So yeah, we can go right into that. Um, if you could just give a little brief summary of who you are and what you do within the realms of metal, and you can also describe like when you started the obelisk and what it is. Sure. Uh, well, I started the obelisk in uh, end of January, 2009, the last weekend of January, 2009, uh, and launched, I don't know, that seems like the before times, like it's pre prehistory. Um, but uh, I have been going ever since. I am the only person behind the site. It's called the obelisk. It's called the obelisk. It's the obelisk.net. Um, for the last going on 15 years, I've been covering various forms of heavy music, whether it's doom, stoner, psychedelic stuff, prog, metal, not metal, what have you. Um, and I have been doing my best to sort of keep up as that genre has boomed and blossomed in that time. Uh, and that has been plenty to keep me busy for the last 14 plus years. Yeah, it's quite a while. Um, is that how you got your start in music journalism? No, I was um, I was a magazine writer for, ah. I don't know, for I don't know, six, six years before that, uh, five or six years. And um, I started out in print media, uh, working at an alt weekly in New Jersey called The Aquarian, which I, uh, eternal love for The Aquarian. Um, and then I worked for a magazine called Metal Maniacs, and I wrote for various freelancing, various others, uh, Unrestrained out of Canada, and I don't know, some others. Um, but I'm very fortunate yeah. that that sort of been able to solidify around just doing my own thing for the last however long. Yeah. Yeah. And so this whole podcast episode was kind of inspired by a post that you made on your social media. Um, people have come to you asking about PR and you basically wrote out uh, a very well thought out post about the benefits behind using PR versus not using PR. Um, Thank you. Yeah. And, yeah, and well, so we wanted to go over it. Yeah, no, please. I, I think, you know, uh, I am very, I am very generally sort of pro public relations in any number of contexts, whether that's like music or corporate or political, whatever it, whatever it is, public relations serves an important purpose in our sort of media sphere every day in ways that we don't understand or realize half the time. Uh, so yeah, that is a thing people ask me like that's, you know, people ask me about labels, people ask me about PR, sometimes people ask me about shows, but not that often, because I don't book shows because it's even more thankless than being a blogger. But, uh, you know, but public relations is something I feel pretty, pretty positive about can have a, a bigger impact on a project than someone who's looking to hire public relations or not looking to hire public relations might realize, um, at least at first. And there are sort of intangible things to be considered as a part of that it's not just about hiring somebody to send out your record which is a definite plus for sure um especially if you're the kind of person who say is an insecure metalhead guitar player who doesn't like talking about your own project well here's somebody whose job is actually to do that um that in itself is 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 reason to be as for public relations, as far as I'm concerned, but, you know, just the sort of being able to connect with someone, um, and, and engage someone and, and engage with someone who is outside of your project, but now has maybe a stake in it. Um, you know, and, and especially if you, if you do a little research or you ask somebody, about hiring public relations, you can and find a good recommendation, find somebody you really click with, there's an opportunity there to really forge a relationship that will help your band, let's say. Um, and, and, you know, and that goes beyond sending out press releases that goes into having a conversation about your goals as a band, having a conversation about 
who you want to hear you and why and what you want your project to be long term and why and and so much stuff that that otherwise goes untalked about can be talked about and and sort of enunciated in ways that help that i i have been helped by uh in working with pr for album releases and 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 have seen others greatly helped by so yes so i am pro pr yeah definitely yeah i mean those are all really good um good analogies and good references i mean that's such a powerful image you know a lot of metalheads are insecure and and musicians in general also you know of course you have the ones that are very arrogant as well on the other side <laughs> yes, of the, the spectrum. other yes the other end yes totally. but a lot of the most talented musicians are quite humble and it's hard to to kind of pimp out your own music and and by that note you know it's uh beneficial just to have somebody that understands your music do you think that obviously there are names that are bigger in PR and smaller in PR? Do you think, how much do you think that that part matters or does it matter more that the person understands your music? I mean, I'm, I'm always going to say the most important thing is having somebody to understand what you're doing. Um, if you can connect with someone large or small who gets it, that's, that is the ideal, at least as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm sure there are people who want to hire PR to sort of get max ears on streams or whatever it is to be a big band. I, you know, that's not really the world I operate in, so I can't speak to it. Um, but cool, if it works, I guess, uh, you know. But for me, the most important thing is is that sort of would be that connection um, and, and having someone to even, you know, Again, just discussing these things, discussing the project, where it's going, what it's doing, why. Uh, and and not only that, but then having that person be able to go out and sort of tell that story on your behalf to press, to, to promoters, to anyone on that person's list and whoever else they send it to from there. Uh, you know, there's so much out there right now especially in sort of the the heavier uh, umbrella of genres. There's so much out there right now that it's, you know, that and an endorsement from somebody can make a difference, can stop something from just being another record coming down the pike because Jesus Christ, how many, you know, how many times a day are we going to get the Bandcamp update and it's like, oh my God, this uh, Stoner Rock played, they got riffs. It's everybody's got riffs. Everybody. What else you got at this point? It's like, I'm 45 years old and I got riffs. It's, that's awesome. So are these 75 dudes in the same t shirt. So, you know, not only about finding an edge, sort of breaking through that mass of genre, but, but having someone to connect with. That's that's what it is. It's connection. Curtis, do you want to jump in here? I do, actually. I wasn't sure if I was uh, going to be cutting you off or anything. Um, so now just to clarify on one thing. So you think that the storytelling aspect is the most important aspect of PR or am I misunderstanding? Um, I don't know saying? if it's, I don't know if it's the most important aspect. I think the most important aspect is is dissemination. But I certainly think what you're disseminating is that story of a record. I and, and I think that's huge. Absolutely. Um, you know, in, in terms of framing a project, what is going to distinguish something from the rest is going to be that is going to be that story is going to be what is what is it about this record that stands it out? Maybe it's well, a didgeridoo. It could be anything, right? I, you know, I, we don't know. We don't know what it is. But but there is Every record in my experience, and I have heard a few records at this point, there are there is something, right? If okay. you know, if a record is or a project is worth a damn, there is something about it to to distinguish it, to to make it special, to to list to an audience as well as to the people who made it. Well, I think one of the earlier steps too. This isn't part of the question, but just a comment is that 
the band has to be good before it can even be disseminated or it looks what's your opinion on that (laughs) yeah i mean okay um yeah it certainly helps definitely does definitely Uh, always right in any context it helps but um you know i'm not actually sure that that's true right i mean because because I have gotten bad records from PR, right? And 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 I think there's, and I have, how do I even say this? I have, I have gotten press releases from publicists and labels and whoever else that like, it's like, you know, this is bad when you're sending it out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that has happened. And, and I have, you know, and I have run into publicists who like, will take on a client without necessarily feeling what they're doing. Uh, and you can usually like at this point, I can, I can pretty, pretty much guess when and where that's happening, but like people got to eat and even yeah. bad, even people who make bad records want their records out there. So, you know, I think that's, it's, it, and what is, and what is good anyway. Fair. I don't know. Um, so let me ask you this then. So does, do you think it matters who your your publicist is then? Like, like, do you kind of feel like there's certain people that you're more inclined to work with in terms of reviewing their stuff versus other PRs? Um, if that makes sense. Like, if you see, like, I'm not asking you to name names, obviously. No, I but, know. No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. There's, there are. Okay, I don't pick up a release just based on i won't pick up a release just based on pr like you usually, usually i won't you know who's working it is is not is not my criteria okay. um there are labels that i want to write about everything they put out at this point i think heavy psych sounds out of italy is doing like signature work for the heavy for the heavy underground and i want to like when i see something of theirs come down the line i want to i want to know about it i want you know if it's something that's applicable i want to cover it whatever it is because you know i believe in what that label is doing and there are certainly others ripple music blah 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 i don't know like a thousand of them but just just based on pr unless sometimes i'm asked sometimes like hey can you shoot this a news post or whatever i'm happy to do it if i can and if I think it fits, um, but usually, usually not just, not just the name of, of the PR behind it will, will motivate me to write about something now. Fair enough. Um, Ali, that was all I had on that end. If you had more, otherwise I can, I have another t- question if possible. Um, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. So how do I frame this without sounding like weird or anything like that? So Okay. okay, so you, you can sound can't. you can sound weird. Let's do it. I can sound okay. I can sound weird. weird. Okay. So what makes you not or sorry, what do you what do you think are the factors that kind of show that a band is not ready for PR? Oh. Not um, ready. Not ready for PR. Yeah. Wow. Uh have nothing to promote, first of all. Well, other than uh, not having let's say they got an <laughs> album. Okay. I, I want to hear the blog. I want to hear the professional magazine writer's opinion. Like, what does it make? Like, how is a band not ready for PR? I have my own ideas. It. But you've been doing this know, for tw- 20 years. I want to know your ideas. Who's not ready for PR? Well, uh, I'll tell I'll, I'll tell you what you're assholes. thinking if you want it. Okay. Assholes. Assholes aren't okay. ready for PR. Like, they're um, control freaks are not ready for PR. Someone has to be Great. willing to, to sort of let go of a part of that. And I have definitely seen artists who hire PR and then reach out directly to writers. And it's like, this is, this is not what you're supposed to be doing. You just, you just hired this person. I know this, I just got the press release 10 minutes ago and now you're emailing me about it. Like let it go. Unless it's a good buddy of yours. That that's different. Prior relationships, notwithstanding you're absolutely correct. That's different. Yes, that is different, but, but that, but that's not always the case either. So Um, those people are not ready for PR. Um, and I think you have to, I think you have to be at a certain point with your project where maybe you've done your round of social media promotion. Maybe you've tried to 
Maybe you've tried to spread the word on your own. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you've toured. Maybe you haven't. Um, but I think having something to say helps. Um, whether that's, hey, we have a new record or, hey, we have a tour or, hey, what, you know, we made a video, whatever it is, you know, have a thing um, and have a perspective if possible. I agree with all those points. Um, my other point, but the other things I want to say is like, if you don't have any assets ready, like I've had bands. Oh yeah. Um, well, I, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I mean, I think sometimes, and this is something that I said in that post too, is I think sometimes Hiring a publicist can be a, a light a fire under your ass to get those things done. Especially if maybe maybe you're the kind of stoner rock band that doesn't have your shit together. And and next thing you know, you've hired a publicist, and the publicist is like, I need photos by Friday. Put your asses in the same place and take a picture, right? Like that's that's huge for a band. Like a band who's 100%. never done that kind of thing before can all of a sudden now has to go find a photographer and do that. And public relations is what made that happen. Um, you know, I, th you know, I th the same thing goes into like setting up your link tree or your band yeah. camp or all that stuff. It is another sort of way and another check on whether or not uh, an artist or a band or a project has its, has their ducks in a row and, and yeah. hugely important for that. That's a massive function. Yeah. And like, I always look at it, like, why are you spending the money if you don't have the assets ready to do it? Absolutely. Right. So like yeah. we've had bands just as an aside, just for any listeners um, who've hired us. I, I am one of those people that stupidly forget to ask for the photographs ahead of time. I do all <laughs> the fucking time. And then after we're hired, I will remember to ask for the photographs and I'm not joking. And heaven forbid they don't have them. 50 to 20% of the time they don't have the fucking photographs. They already have their single uploaded to distro kid ready for something. Oh. And uh I'm scrambling. So I've had I to believe do you. Oh yeah, we, I've had to do the premiere without photographs. I even had to do that recently. I'm not gonna name the band's name. Uh, but it's happened. Um, so please make sure when you come to a PR that you have your photographs already and everything like that. Cause I am an idiot and I forget like half the time to ask bands and then I find out later. Yeah. Um, out goes out goes the blurry live shot there it is oh and you yeah. you because yeah. you used to you used to work in print you know how how important that is for print like you won't even get coverage half the time you know the the it's funny you mention it because be, you know doing a, a column for cream uh has been like the first time in years that i have had to chase down high-res images of a certain uh uh proportion and mm -hmm. and it's and man, that's that's a pain in the ass. I was like, wow, I'm really glad I'm on the internet and I don't have to do this all the time. Well, but that yeah. you, you just brought up a good point about the proportions. Like we'll have bands send us like oh, photos that are just like weird and they're like, dude, we can't fucking use these. I know you spent hundreds of dollars, but we can't fucking yeah. use this. So um yeah. Ali, I, I'm now ranting about different assets. No, that's okay. I think we're getting into like a lot post. of the really like the intangible benefits of PR is really an interesting topic because I think so many people think about their PR and whether their PR campaign was successful or not based on like an, a list of links. Yeah. And I just think that's such a good observation that it's far more than that. It's deeper than that. Hopefully. Um, I mean, ideally, right. That's, that's the, that's the hope is that you find someone who you connect with. And I get, you know, obviously that's not always going to happen. Um, and then, right. Right. So you move on to the next person, but but hopefully something has clicked and, and to the benefit of both getting the band out there, getting something, whatever it is, heard and and to the project itself. Yeah. Uh, JJ just brought up an indirect, indirectly a very good point. Um, well, maybe not indirectly, but um, I think the relationship between the publicist and the um, client as well is very important. Um, like if you hire someone that you just don't click with or who is not the right genre for you, it's not going to work out at all. So I think that's kind of important. Like um, if we have a bunch of different genres we work with, we don't, sorry, my phone's now going off and I can't shut it off. Um, oh no, you didn't turn your phone I off. Forgot, I forgot. Starting to, a podcast I, episode. Yes. Sorry. Guess who's a publicist. Yeah, that's yep. me. Um, so anyways, what was I saying? So uh, now I lost complete track of what I was saying. Uh, you, were you were talking, you were talking about the relationship. That's right. The relationship. A, a client and the publicist. That's right. I think I think that's important because like with us, we don't specialize in a certain genre, for example. But like if right. you're a 
uh, stoner rock band, and you're going with someone that mainly handles death metal. And eh, th- yeah, like they probably don't even know you, for example, or if they do, it might they might not even really deal with yeah. you because I mean you mainly handle prog and stoner rock. That that has yeah I yeah I I every now and then I get I get pitched some I'm like sure. some like s- s- Swedish death metal, and I'm like yeah that's really cool, but I'm not gonna write about it. It's like I know. actually had a client who was in a death metal band about six years ago tell me they wanted to specifically land at the obelisk. And I looked at them and I went, cool, but it's not going to happen. No, you didn't. I, I said, no. I wouldn't even talk. I said, I wouldn't even pitch you. Uh-huh. I thought that was, I, I was just like death metal. No, dude, it, JJ doesn't do death metal last time I yeah. checked, but I don't really No. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I'm, you know, I like a lot of it. I, I, I'm I sure. think, you know, older hate I'm eternal sure. and, and whatever else, but like, you know, I don't, I, I don't have, the sort of background to, to write about it we're off topic yeah but we are off abs- topic but but you're absolutely right i you know uh, i'm now i'm curious about who the band is tell me who it is i, I forgot now but i just remember <sighs> this happening i'm sorry jj if you, if you I totally, go back if you if remember go back and send the email message. yeah send me a message uh, if I can find and i'll it. write about them i'll write well, about I'll pi- the record, about I'll this, about pi- the record now I'll, I'll pitch you a symphonic metal band next time perfect perfect, perfect. i will i will write the worst review of it and Perfect. i don't mean I'll, and i don't mean i'll pan the record i just mean i know nothing about <laughs> symphonic metal and so this be is being recorded like, it sounds just be like it sounds like nightwish this this is being <laughs> recorded awful. Aaliyah. jj just said he would review the next shield of wings at the obelisk we will, we will hold him to this poorly i said i, I said i would review it poorly Fair. and i i he did yeah that is what i said still a review I'll, I'll great great deal <laughs> thanks curtis <laughs> you're welcome i'll be quiet now all right and but, we talk about PRs understanding their clients. Um, oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> it all ties together. That's nice. That's it all ties pull together. It in a loop. Right. Yeah. You mentioned in your post as well, like it's bands can get big by word of mouth, sure. but it's not as, it's not like, it's not like you have to have PR, but it is beneficial and it can't hurt, you said in the post. Yeah. I th- yeah. And I, and I think that's, that's true. Um, at least for the for the most part. I mean, not everybody needs it. Not everybody, not every project it wants to sort of get itself out there to to people. You know, uh, you know, some things are just someone just made it and put it out, and maybe then you know, and maybe they're content to share it on their own or whatever. Maybe they're cheap. Heavy metal is very cheap as a culture. It is a cheap culture. It comes from not having a lot of money, not wanting to spend a lot of money. So yeah. you know fair yep. right i get it mm-hmm. i don't have a lot of money so but so you know p and pr is an expense and good pr is is an expense but the argument i would make there is that the right pr is worth it in the right situation yeah yeah so we are down to three minutes about just a few minutes left is yeah. there anything else you wanted to say on the topic of pr yeah um is there anything else I want to say about PR? Hmm. Yeah, I have been very interested to sort of see the uh, growth and sort of development of public relations over the last 20 years that I've been in the music industry. Oh, yeah. What have you observed about that? As, as you know, I, I've been around long enough now that that a generation has sort of aged out and another generation has come up. And I've gone from, you know, <laughs> used to be, used to be vinyl in the mail, then it was CDs in the mail, and then it's, you know, tapes or whatever in the mail. And then it was links to downloads. Now it's links to streams. Now it's ask for a stream, right? That's, you know, then that's sending music. Um, I have seen that sort of locked down through the digital thing. And I, I think it, at the same time, it makes life easier for a publicist because everything is contained within doesn't allow for the same kind of relationship building as, you know, let's say 20, 25 years ago, but everybody has more clients, everybody has less time and everybody has less money and everything costs more and that's life. Uh, So people are doing their best. If you hire a publicist and, and you don't get the results you want, understand that maybe something didn't click, but people are doing their best. That is that is what I have found, and I think that's true on all ends, 
right? The bands are doing their best to make good records. The publicist is doing their best to spread the word and at, to the right places at the right time. Labels are doing their best to get stuff out. Everybody's doing their best and I'm doing my best to cover as much as I can, right? So maybe everybody should just chill out a little bit. I guess that's that's what I want to say. About it. That's a nice a nice closure closer like at the end. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank, Thank you, you for your Thank you, soulful thoughts, bringing some soul back to the topic of PR. And everyone listening, thank you for listening. And until next time, make like a bull and throw those runs up. <laughs>